the next song that we're going to sing is Thank You, Lord. You all will be wondering that this may be such an inappropriate song to sing on an occasion like this. But I found out that Bung Lui's favourite songs are Don Owen's songs. And this is one of her favourite. And knowing Bung Lui, this would be the words that she would say, right? Thank you, Lord. There's just one thing I want to say. Thank you, Lord, for all that you have given to me. With a grateful heart, with a song of praise, with an outstretched arm. That's our dear sister. Let's sing this song together. such a loved one. Father, yet we come before you, submitting to you and to your will, and still saying, thank you, Lord, because you have first given her to us. And we also thank you as we know that she is no longer in pain. She's no longer suffering. And she's resting in you. And so be with us tonight as we reflect on your words as we reflect on our hope, as we reflect, God, on what you want to tell us. And so we commit this evening's great service into your hands, Father. Speak to us, minister to us, and comfort us. We ask and pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let me read for you John chapter 14 verse 1 to 6. Jesus says, 
Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. My father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I'm going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I'm going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you're going. So how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. I'll now invite Reverend Paul to give us words of exhortation. So we come to God in prayer. Father God, we know as we come to you this morning, our hearts are heavy, our hearts are troubled. God, we ask that you come among us and speak to us and let the Holy Spirit comfort us and strengthen us. In Jesus' name we pray. Now, when I was pastoring in TMC a few years back, there was one afternoon, a sister came to the pastor and knocked on my door. And he started asking me, Pastor, do you see my father in law or not? Because the mother, the father-in-law went out in the morning and did not go home for the whole day because he knew that the father cannot find a way home. Because now I believe if after tonight wet service, to go to the morning, if I go to the hall, if you do not know where to go, how to go home, or you don't know where she will go, will you worry? You go to the morning, 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 you go I'm sure if I walk up from this, this door and I don't know how to go home, I, I'll, I'll start to worry. And not only will I will say I'll worry, our family member will be very worried as well. I'm sure we know where are we going, where is our house is, and for those who are coming overseas, you know where is your hotel is, and you, you go, I'm sure you know the way. But I think that is not, not all. I'm sure it's not all. Not only will you, we need to know the way of going our earthly home. We must know how to go to our eternal home the day we leave this world. I think this is a very important thing that we should all know. After I finish my earthly journey, how to go back to the heavenly home where our Father God has prepared for us. Just now we have read through all the verses and I think that they are all very important. But emphasize on the last verse, that is verse 6. I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. 刚才小天牧师所说的经文都很重要不过我会专注在最后一节就是我就是道路真理和生命
跟他们同所分享的。那 this person was spoken to this to this disciple. Jesus spoke to his disciple during the last supper, and then he even prophesied that he will betray. After that, Jesus, Jesus, even said, he not just said, he just told the disciples, "Later, I will be betrayed." Then he said, "What?" He said, "I will go to the cross to face death." Not only he will be betrayed by the disciples, he said to his disciples, "He will be crucified." He's facing death. I think this, this is very challenging for the disciples. Disciples, and then he said, "I believe this is very challenging for the disciples." Disciples, and then he said, "I believe this is very challenging for the disciples." Disciples, and then he said, "I believe this is very challenging for the disciples." Disciples, and then he said, 耶稣要离开了，他们已经很紧张了。又听说他要面对死亡，他们就更加害怕了。Then Jesus comforted them, "Do not let your heart be troubled, and trust in God and in Him." 然后耶稣就安慰他们说：“不要，你的心不要被困扰啊，也不要不要伤心。你要相信神，更是要相信我。” I think this is the first I want to say to the parents, that the family members, the relative of the boy. Don't let your heart be troubled. I know it's heavy, we are troubled, but trust in God, and of course, most important of all, trust in our Lord Jesus. He told them, Jesus told them he's going back to the Father's house, and he even elaborated in verse 3 that not only he's going back to prepare a house for them, he will come back. Wow, this is very comforting. Not only Jesus is going to the heavenly house, home to prepare a house for those who believe in him, he will come back and to take us there. Jesus 安慰他们就说，我是回天父的家，然后我会为你们预备地方，然后呢，我还会再来，我还会再来接你到我父那里去，你就与我同在了。I will come and bring you back to the heavenly home. You will be with me, with Jesus. Now that was very comforting to them, and that was the promise. Not only Jesus said to the disciples at that night, there was a promise. Jesus telling us to be. Not only that, that night, Jesus gave them a promise. He also told them that all the things that Jesus did was a promise. He went to the Father's house, to prepare a house for us. Then he will come back to 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 us. Yet, the very naughty disciple, I believe, Thomas said, No, 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 I, I didn't know the way. 在第四节，耶稣就说，我去夫人家，你们都知道怎么去啊。然后在第五节的时候 ，Thomas， 他就说，我不知道怎么去。Then Jesus replied in verse six, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one come to the Father except through me. 然后耶稣在第六节就很清楚的告诉他们，他说。我就是道路、真理的生命。若不接着我，没有人能到父那里去。我就是道路、真理和生命。I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. 没有人，没有其他的方路的路了。你就是要靠耶稣。Now, when you come to the to understand, now what is the way? 到底这个道路是什么？ I want I want you just imagine that you are you are going to a place that you are not familiar and how how will you go? Yeah, this afternoon we are coming from FMC to this uh, this household. Do you know how we come? We are not familiar the place. We don't know what is the best road to come. How how what do we do? Google. Google. Yes, yes we did. This Google map. Now what if this is a place Google map have not map up the road? Right? Like what I did it cap it. Oh, Kapit, no Google Map. <laughs> oh, really? The signal is very weak. Now, if we don't know the place, if we don't know the place, we can ask Google Map, or we can find that place. But if we don't know the Google Map, we don't know the signal. How do we do it? 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 You can ask, hey, how 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 should I go to Lorong Lorong Kelanji for 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 C one? For A for A two. You can always ask. Now, if you ask someone who is from Lorong Kelanji for A two, you're safe. But if you ask me who is then start staying in Sapo Lorong five, you demand dangerous. 
You know what I mean or not? You can ask people how to go to a place. If you find the right person who is from that place, you're safe. And it's even better. You say, oh, I will come and bring you there. Wow. Isn't that better? 如果你找到一个人刚好是你要去那个地方，他没带你去，你就你就没有不明哦。更好的是我来带你去。Now this is what we have learned from this Bible verse. This is what we have learned from the Bible verse. So my family members, relatives, and friends of sister Unloi, Jesus Christ is the only God, the only true God who came from heaven. He came from heaven to this world, to this world, two thousand years ago. Jesus Christ is the only true God who came from heaven to this world, two thousand years ago. Jesus Christ is the only true God who came from heaven to this world, two thousand years ago. Jesus Christ is the only true God who came from heaven to this world, two thousand years ago. Jesus Christ is the only true God who came from heaven to this world, two thousand years ago. Jesus Christ is the only true God who came from heaven to this world, two thousand years ago. 回到天父那里去。So my dear friend, if you want to find the right way to heaven, I believe Jesus is the only way. He came from heaven, he went back, and he is prepared to come and bring us back there. Jesus is the only one who came from heaven to bring us back there. Jesus is the only one who came from heaven to bring us back there. Jesus is the only one who came from heaven to bring us back there. Now some of you might be wondering, are you sure that Jesus will come and fetch us up to heaven? I'm going to test, do a testimony on this. My sister, my late sister, passed away with good old head. When he was in the last hospital, taking a lap before he, he, he died, I was with her on the bed, bedroom, on the you know, seat, and he pointed to the door. He said, Asen, he called me Asen. I saw the angels coming to pick me now. Now I can, I'm very sure. No point, my sister is lying to me, right? He pointed to the door. I saw the angels coming. So, my dear friends, Jesus might not be coming personally, but he will send angels to bring us back. With the angels coming from heaven, bring us back to heaven, we will never lose the way. This one to find me very sure. So I think that is a that is a that's the way. Now what is the truth? Jesus is the truth as well. As I said, he's a God from heaven two thousand years ago and then he came to this world. He came to this world not to Kaleo Kaleo. He came to this world with only one reason. He came to save the people from the bondage of sin and death. He came to die for our sin on the cross. Jesus like that the city, but since I tell you one word. 他来到这个世界上，为我们每一个人，每一个人的罪钉死在十字架上。三天后复活升天，为我们预备了那永恒的天家。He died for us on the cross, crucified. He as, as a red, sorry, he rose from dead on the third day, ascended to heaven after forty days. My dear friend, this is the truth. And this is the promise of Jesus in verse three. If I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back. I will come back and take you to be with me. Then you also may be where I am. This is a very comforting promise from our Lord Jesus Christ. So let, let us remember, Sister Bunoy has made the choice, <laughs> and I believe this is the best place now. I made the decision to believe in Jesus in year 2000. I was a non-believer. I made a decision to follow Jesus in year 2000. I said that he was my savior. And then I, I surrender myself to be his servant in year 2006, 2017. So that is the decision I have never, never regretted. Now we are, I am about the same age as our regular leader. We are about to retire very soon. Huh? <laughs> So I think I've never, I never regretted that decision. And I believe, our dear sister, don't know it, she can make the best decision in her life to accept Jesus as his Savior and to follow him. That's the best decision. And I was told, 
I knew that Sister Bunga had been fighting with the deceitless for the past quite a number of years, but quite a number of years I knew. Yeah. And though she, she herself was not physically well at the time, but she had been a great supporter to many patients, cancer patients, including my late sister, physically. Yes. Who know me? Who call me? They were supporting my sister in 2006 to 2008. Yeah, that was the time. So I, I can see that she's a great supporter to those kinds of patients, even though she herself is not physically that good. If I'm not mistaken, I think Sister Bunoy was very active in this like, Cancer Awareness Society of Japan. Yes. Very actively involved. <laughs> Some of us will be wondering, hey, see, you are not well, you are sick. Why are you spending all your energy to do all this? I strongly believe that Sister Bruno can do that because she has all the strength, not by herself, not by God, for the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, that strengthen her and, 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 and move her and encourage her and move her to serve the other cancer patient with love, joy, and peace in her own heart and I believe she had brought the great comfort to many cancer patients including my late sisters I must say Sister Bunoy had lived a good life this for me as a faithful follower of the Lord in this country we are so she has a best life testimony. And we thank God for her wonderful and meaningful 56 years of life. My dear friends, relative, Sister Bunoy has made the right choice. She believed in Jesus and chose to follow Jesus. And she knew for sure where she's going after leaving this world. I was saying, Sister Bunui, she has made a very good decision. She is trusting Jesus. And she is trusting Jesus. She is very confident that when she came out of this world, she will go to the next one. Let me confirm again, reaffirm this truth. Our sister Bunui, is now resting in a heavenly home, a much, much better place than this earthly home here. Yeah? I'm not saying your house is not good, at least. I'm not saying that. But the house, the home in heaven is much, much better. There's no fear, no sickness, no worry. I always like to say that every, every day you sing karaoke. No sickness, no fear. See, it's during life. From now on. My dear friend, Jesus not only is the way and the truth, he's life. He's life too. Now, beside the promise of eternal life in heaven after a physical death, Jesus gives all who believe in him a new life. Jesus not only is the way and the truth, he's life too. But beside the promise of eternal life in heaven after a physical death, Jesus gives all who believe in him a new life. 圣灵进入在我们内内心当中的时候，我们有一个全新的生命。而且，耶稣，当你信耶稣从那一刻开始，他将会陪伴你一生的陪伴。The minute you accept Jesus as a savior, our Lord Jesus Christ through the Holy Spirit will accompany you for the rest of your life till we finish our earthly journey. As I said, I was a free thinker, non believer many years ago. And uh, I never thought I need God in my life. I was a very proud person. I thought I could depend on my own, own, own self, my own ability, my own, own strength. I, I'm doing fine. I, I'll be fine. That's what I believe. Though I was doing fine during that time, that years, when I was young, not that young actually, okay? But I have no peace in my heart. I have no peace in my heart and... and, and I must say that there was no love in my family. My daughter, my son looked at me as a monster in the heart. 
爸爸一回家脸是黑的，他们就快快躲掉了。Only when I accepted Jesus as my personal savior, I changed my life. I changed my life. I have peace in my heart, and I start. I started to build my family with love. For those who know me, you go wherever I go, I bring my, I bring my wife along. If my children will come along, I bring them, and we are always stay together. And I'm, I'm doing all my best to build my family again with Jesus' love, with God's love. I can love because God does love. So, my dear friends, remember this: though we come with a heavy heart. But rather, but remember that this world is our temporary home. The heavenly home is our final and eternal home. 虽然今天晚上我们可能心里有很多的不舍，心里有些的沉重，但我们要知道，这个世界只是我们短暂的家。其实我们已经离开这个短暂的家，他回到他更更美好、更永恒的家。So I hope from the line of sister Renee. We all can follow Sister Runei to make the right choice and follow Jesus. 我盼望透过今晚的分享，圣经的教导，我们能够学习 Sister Runei 的榜样，我们做一个正确的选择，跟随耶稣，然后呢，好好的让耶稣成为我们生命中的救主。Amen. Amen. For the owner of the car, two one eight K. Please check your car. Apparently, the lights are on. Two one eight K. Thank you, Reverend Paul. And indeed, we want to give thanks to God for our sister Bonwei's life. And so, let's sing this hymn of thanksgiving. Give thanks. Now, um, 
Yeah, of course, uh, Bului has impacted my life, the obviously, la, huh? uh, my, my, uh, uh, this thing. But what I would like to mention, today, 14th of February, uh, is actually her birthday. Uh, her birthday. Yeah, yeah. People say, you know, we hope you're lucky because your wife, uh, you know, you can have two in one. Uh, birthday and Valentine's Day, you know, uh, on the same day. I say, not really, I have been, I mean, I have to be like constantly reminded when the day comes because you just cannot get away. 14th of February is a birthday because you see flowers everywhere, you know, there is just no, no excuse to, to not celebrate a birthday. Huh? Uh, and by the way, also thank you for some of you maybe skipping your Valentine's dinner today, you know, for coming to here. Yeah. yeah, anyway, so, uh, and, um, we, we heard going to the law uh, yesterday, 13th of February. I think with that double digit, 1314, I think it will be even more very difficult uh, for me to be, you know. Uh, and uh, if 14th of February is her earthly birthday, then 13th of February is actually her birth into the heaven, if we trust in this thing. Huh? So, so uh, yeah, I mean it's a, a beautiful number of course to ask to to be uh, to remember this. Okay, now we were married in uh, uh, 1996, uh, no, seven of December. I was trying to she always complain I couldn't remember the date <laughs> when we saw the children. Uh, we were married for 28 years, you know, and we all she and I actually came from very two different worlds. Uh, put it that way. Not because she is a dear Jew and my full child and then you know uh, you know uh, it's, it's a, a lot of cultural difference uh, and uh, uh, she, uh, she's the youngest in the family actually I'm the eldest in the family. Uh, family is the doing business, my family, my parents are teachers you know so uh, we always, my side is always kind of always straight with things very Cautiously, carefully balance, you know, uh, and not her being born into the business family, it's so it's very different, you know, and uh, her character, she see things in black and white, and I see tend to see things in grey. She see things <laughs> rainbow color, I see things you know more the rainbow colors. So, in the beginning of the years, you know, in the marriage uh, first year, we we uh, we have a lot of things to you know, kind of to adjust to each other, like, you know, like two square, you know, keeps to trying to rub against each other. Yeah, we, we go through much challenges and go this thing, huh? Yeah, um, and uh, to her things are generally straightforward, you know. Uh, she thought I'm too complicated, you know, and I thought you think too much, uh, too lost uh, all, this thing. So, so yeah. I mean, knowing her, her la, I mean, some of you, you know uh, this thing, huh? uh, knowing her character and personality. And that's how we grow together. Uh, because we have a common, uh, come to a common point, uh, uh, you know, uh, she, 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 at, uh, in early days, uh, uh, she probably is the only Christian in the family, you know. And, uh, uh, you know, of course, I came from a Christian family, and that's where the point of balance will find each other. You know, uh, to as a counterbalance, uh, uh, put the way. Now, yeah, um, yeah, we we gone through many challenges. You know, uh, uh, this thing. Yeah, um, of course, uh, uh, twenty four years ago, I brought her to Kuching. I promised her, and uh, at that time, she even had problem. You know, where is Saba, where is Sarawak, you know, uh, you know, can never get it, uh, this thing, you know. She's very poor in, uh, in uh, you know, uh, mapping, you know, uh, for, for this thing, huh? uh, direction, uh, you know, uh, not to say ladies are usually poor in uh, direction, you know. I, I'm usually very strong in, uh, you know, in, the, in, uh, in the sense of direction, okay. My point is, I promise her, you know, uh, coming to a, a very different part of Malaysia, you know, I will take, her, take care of her, uh, this thing, huh? 
uh, took a while for us to settle down and then of course uh, with the career uh, in, uh, in, um, in the corporate world and then church ministry and later on of course uh, after diagnosed with cancer and then slowly uh, she, she left the corporate world and then more on the ministry in particular we scan the NGO I will not uh, touch too much of that I mean there are quite a number of scan members here so um, yeah I mean uh, uh, yeah, that is her character is very much different from me like, oh, okay, I always call her a bulldozer like, you know, she will just do those two, you know, fei hua sao so, uh, okay. uh, yeah, and um, I must say she is uh, Woman of faith, la. as I say, uh, to her, things are very straightforward. We give people trust in law, and not only that, in very practical person, you know, no, uh, no, uh, no, no theory, no nothing, you know, theoretical on this, la, you know. Yeah, uh, so, I mean, she has uh, always find opportunity to, to, her, to serve the law, and uh, that is something uh, also. Uh, always administer me uh, to me also uh, and to our families as well and uh, and uh, during my earlier days before I should have found her I should ask God hey, uh, uh, can you get me a, 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 my, my dear lady who knows music you know who is a tough lady you know who can take care of the family in case I go earlier uh, this thing you know my grandfather passed away when he was 30 years so old you know, uh, nothing is uh, uh, sure, you know, uh, this thing, you know. Uh, but, uh, but my point is, uh, she has been uh, uh, juggling, doing all these things, you know, very well, okay. Yeah, yeah. so uh, she has a strong faith, okay, obviously, uh, very strong faith, as I say, she uh, trusts a lot very much, okay. Uh, as I say, um, she uh, thinks that is a simple thing. So, um, yeah, I think um, uh, that is a quick sharing. Uh, as I say, um, uh, yeah, uh, for the last few days, I, I also hear uh, some sharings, you know, uh, people share with me how they got administered to her. Uh, this thing, uh, so uh, some of you, I of course, uh, I wasn't aware of, you know, uh, this thing because, uh, uh, especially uh, in those uh, in the church, we know, uh, and I know many of you love her and they have been caring for her, and uh, I, I don't have to name, uh, I mean, it's not fair if I, I start counting every, uh, many of you, uh, this thing, uh, but uh, really, really, uh, uh, she, she actually, you know, uh, yeah, she, I, I know uh, towards the last day she always want to say she knows that the time is actually running out. She, uh, you know, uh, serve as much, you know. Yeah, uh, just to share a little bit, you know, um, I mean, uh, she went to the law actually earlier than I had expected. Uh, I thought it could be just another two months or three months. Since two months ago, she decided not to uh, opt for any chemotherapy anymore, prefer any palliative and uh, pain uh, management. Huh? And uh, I respect her decision and she write to raise her home and she's ready and, uh, uh, you know, and kind to, you know, uh, if not take her with, uh, you know, with her. Yeah. Uh, so uh, she has um, uh, she, she was diagnosed with a cancer 18 years ago uh, uh, in 2006 uh, and then uh, you know uh, after 11 years she had that relax again in 2017 so uh, it was a very very long journey uh, and also a, 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 a good uh, a long journey of uh, grace uh, by the, our Lord as well uh, you know and uh, in 2006, Yiling was still five, and uh, Yiyang was still uh, uh, nine year old. You know, I, I know um, that particular evening, she weep, you know, very seldom, so uh, we, she said that, you know, children were still young. 
it's okay with her but just got you know uh, the children were still young and uh, uh, asked for God's mercy la. and then uh, you know uh, we, yesterday I think uh, you know she has 18 years uh, you know grace period but a lot I mean we thank God for that uh, you know uh, because you know uh, we thought actually would be shorter and all this uh, but 18 years I think uh, we enjoy God's grace on that you know yeah um, yeah, things actually uh, went a little bit uh, fast uh, pace, you know, her health and deteriorated for the last three months, especially the last few weeks. Uh, huh? And uh, before Chinese New Year, as I say, I thought that, you know, she, we will just have another uh, two, three months, perhaps six months. Uh, but just, uh, you know, a day before New Year Eve, you know, the oncologist Dr. Winnie called me, then, you know, be prepared, you know, uh, that, you know, uh, uh, the uh, time is running out, you know, um, uh, hard, uh, very difficult to say that and, uh, about the exact timing. But her spirit was still good, so we just don't, we still think that, you know, uh, you know could we wait for most timing and thought that they're still able to sustain through uh, this thing. Uh, uh, on the first day of Chinese New Year, especially in the afternoon, uh, she falls asleep most of the time. Uh, her friend also, the first business, uh, actually told me that you know the next 48 hours will be critical it did actually uh, I actually saw her uh, uh, a brief her last breath you know around 6 18 uh, early yesterday morning uh, together Lin, uh, this thing, uh, uh, just, she went in peace uh, I think uh, a day before actually she will say I'm ready to leave you know I just want to leave uh, she say quite tough you know uh, uh, why are we what are we waiting for she thought that she's on life supporting system so I told her uh, she's not you know because before that she did mention that don't give her any life support assistance uh, and towards the end you know she had been on the morphine for the last seven days or more lah, you know uh, this thing to do the pain and all this thing, you know, uh, uh, quite difficult, but of course, uh, you know, uh, relatively still a short period. Uh, I, I, I would not, just don't have to go through a difficult time. She had high, high level of uh, pain tolerance, suffering, and she never complained, actually, I must say. I actually make my uh, life very easy, much more easier, lah, you know. I go on with my uh, daily work, you know. I don't have to worry too much because she will take care of this thing. Huh? Uh, she, she never, uh, uh, not so much into self pity step. Uh, so so uh, I think um, uh, she had that strength. Huh? Oh, okay, yeah. Uh, we, we still thank God, even though, uh, you know, uh, you know, still relatively a short life, you know, uh, uh, just one day full short of uh, being 57, but we still give thanks to God. Uh, the reason being is also, uh, you know, she always give thanks to God, you know. Uh, as I say, she has, uh, she uh, is and um, will always be the pillar of faith in our family. Okay. Alright, uh, by God's grace. Thank you, I didn't really prepare for this, so it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be a bit of a short one. When your mom has a terminal illness, you tend to think about your parents' death and just life in general a lot earlier than your friends will. And because of that I hurt a lot. But my mom never made me feel like she always made me feel like I could trust her and her own journey. And yeah, I feel like I've thought about this day and how she would go for a long time. And I've always imagined like how it would happen. But I think like nothing nothing prepared me for the relief I felt for her like the happiness I felt for her. It sounds weird to say this, but I was very, very happy for her because in the last few months and the last one week especially, it was really, really, really hard to watch her go through it. And like my family, we've all seen her, like you, a lot of people see her as like this, you know, leader of scan and like, 
you are just a very cheerful person. But uh, my family, we have also like seen a lot of like the times where she has like a lot of bad days at home. At the time, you have to go to the hospital like every few days, send her to the hospital. And like honestly, it's very hard for me. And like I think relatively, I'm quite young, so. Yeah, it's quite hard for me to deal with this, especially because it happened when I was a kid. But yeah, like I'm very grateful for a lot of the things that it taught me. My mom told me that if there's a day that she doesn't, she says she's always like I don't know why she's always on the phone, like always texting. She said if she's if there's a day that goes by that she's not. Caring for people, she doesn't feel like lonely, and I think a lot of people can relate. My mom like has a lot of friends at like not very big, and yeah, and she also told me always to be kind, to speak your truth, and to have a lot of clarity. She she's a person with a lot of clarity. I think if you know her, she just yeah, you feel like there's nothing that you can. Like she's not like hiding anything, you know. She's just like her, and she has very bright and strong character. And yeah, she also always told me to just do your best in whatever you want to do. Care about what you want to do, and like everything will come after. And one of the last things also that I want to say to everyone is like my mom always told me that like just live every day to the fullest and. Have fun, enjoy your life. Like honestly, yeah, I just do what you love, enjoy your life, and like you love everyone. So I think my mom would want us all to be like to feel whatever you're feeling, but also remember like to just be grateful and yeah, because my mom like even when she was going through a lot, she'd be like, oh yeah, I don't think I can make it to choir. This Sunday or like quite as soon as the spring, this Sunday and I can't go, and then like I'll wake up the next day and she's like, oh I really like this song actually I'm just gonna I'm gonna join choir tomorrow and then she just goes and do it, like yeah I'm just like oh, I thought you, like you you're like me and she's like it's okay I I think I'm okay today and then she just goes and does it, so yeah I think that's one thing everyone can learn like every day is different every day you learn new things and every day. Every day is just a different day, and you, yeah. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you, Thank you very much. Any questions? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, I'll just pass the mic to you, and then you can just stand there. Uh, turn, turn around. Hi, I'm Esther. Um, in 2015, I got breast cancer. And um, that time I was quite alone, even though my family supported me a lot. So, but I don't know anyone who has breast cancer. So one day, I, I looked at the newspaper that I saw about a cancer society having a seminar and uh, it's at, at the end of the end of the um, it was published in the newspaper so there's a name, there's a contact person I can call that was Pumlin so I called and she asked me to join the meeting and that time I feel that I found people who have some problem with me, who can share with me and go through with me this journey. So I'm very thankful for you. Thank you, Esther. Anyone else? Yes. Would you like to come to the YouTube? This guy. Uh, 
Every time when we came to visit her, thinking that we want to encourage her. However, we were the one being encouraged by her. Because of the faith that she has in God. And her very active faith in God. And her joy within her. We're not going to share about uh, our things, uh, our relationship with her. Uh, when our children were young, uh, we would come here during Chinese New Year to her house. Their house. So, uh, so uh, they she actually uh, um, witnessed how our children had grown. Uh, <coughs> yeah, about the same age as the young So they played together when uh, they, my children were in Kuching. So when my children when our children heard about Gundui's passing away, they have actually put down some words what they would like to express to them. And so uh, they uh, asked if we could read this out together for the family. Yeah. Auntie Pun Lui is special to us growing up. We cherish the times when our family used to stay at the Lao's house every Chinese New Year when we were kids. Auntie Pun Lui always made us feel very comfortable and at home. In the few recent years, when we were able to go to their house to Pai Nian, we would comment to each other how heartwarming it was to talk with both Uncle Hui Ho and Auntie Bun Lui. We love how sweet and kind Auntie Bun Lui is. We admire how strong she was in fighting this cancer and are very encouraged by her unwavering faith in God. We thank God that she is now with Jesus and with no more pain and suffering. Auntie Pun Lui has blessed us and we will miss her dearly. So, uh, not only that uh, Pun Lui has encouraged us, and her life has actually encouraged our next generation. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Our condolences. Uh, I am Dachin Dayang Mariami, uh, the advisor for societies uh, for cancer advocacy and awareness. Uh, <clears throat> well, actually, Boon Lui started SCAM. I was not even in SCAM then. But on the first year, the annual, uh, the anniversary of SCAN, they were looking for someone to talk about cancer. And I am a cancer survivor like her. Uh, I'm also a breast cancer survivor. And they wanted to do a video uh, where they can produce and show to others regarding uh, survivors. So I was one of the, those people that she, uh, she approached and uh, the group came to my house and uh, took the video and actually the video has been used for over and over because I always mention in the video that when you have cancer, please eat. The only thing you can't eat is kayu, batu, semen. Actually, a lot of time, people die of starvation because there's not enough nourishment in your body after your chemo. 
Anyhow, that's history. So that was the first anniversary of SCAN and I came in after the, the video was taken. And since then, I have been with her and uh, it has been a beautiful journey because both of us more or less start uh, when we got cancer. My, my children were also quite young then, but not as young as hers, you know, because I'm much, much older. <laughs> but then uh, it's no different what we have gone through. And together, uh, I know people like Esther has come to us and many more. And many a time, we share uh, counselling because we have a, a team of counsellors among us. Sometimes she gets uh, Iban or a Bahasa Malaysia, uh, a Malay lady, and she would just pass to me and we do share the counselling together. Or I get someone who speaks Mandarin. I can speak Hokkien, but I can't speak Mandarin. And I can speak a little bit of Iban. Uh, you know, I mean, we share a lot of things uh, between us uh, with a person who is getting not only breasts but different other cancers, and the and she has been very pushy. <laughs> Our members there laugh because uh, we were producing a book. Yeah, when you have cancer, what's next? So all of us were the contributors because we write from our heart. We wrote from our experience, yeah? So when we were doing that, you know, sometimes everybody has their work, sometimes don't get into it and say, hurry up, hurry up, you know, but everybody was saying, oh, here come Budlo, you know? <laughs> keep, keep, keep on pressing on, and as though we have nothing else to do, you know? <laughs> but then anyhow, she was the prime mover, so it was done, and eventually, we raised enough money to get it translated into other languages, Bahasa Malaysia, Mandarin, and even Iban. Yeah. So that's uh, what we have done together. And we also share stories of our children. Yeah. Uh, you know, as mothers, we always have the fear. I'm in my remission, but we never know when it will strike us again. Uh, if you know the word in Bahasa Malaysia, uh, it's like hidup di hujung tanduk at the end of the horn. Anything, if you have a cake, then it will break easily. So we don't know. We might be okay. Something will strike us, you know. So those are the fears that we share together as mothers, especially when we um, have young children. Um, I have gone through, my children are older, and I have only one who's not married, the rest are all married, I'm so glad. Yeah, but then, uh, well, auntie will be here when you get married. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm meticulous with design. I spend two hours on this wreath. <laughs> <laughs> and I make sure that the, the, the florists do what I wanted. And eventually, I think she nearly said, do it yourself. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, it's Valentine tomorrow, and I need to make money. You know? So eventually, I said, OK, OK. And in, in the meantime, at yesterday evening, I was also in the middle of a, a, a birthday party. So in between the birthday party, I was talking to the florist. You know? So uh, well, I'll be there to make sure that your wedding will be wonderful. <laughs> Anyhow, put, putting that aside, she was a lovely person. We, we, like I said, we shared things together. And I was so glad I saw her last Monday, yeah. Um, which some of us did not uh, have that. And um, I have shared also uh, her, uh, well, there are some of our members who are not in Beijing. They're from other parts of Sarawak, yeah? And they have been very sad. I couldn't sleep myself last night because, um, you know, you, when, when you have this together, when you, when you fight together, you, you are comrades together, you have this feeling of, uh, you know, it's like something that pinches you, you know? So, uh, 
I don't know how you get through this, but with all our hearts, our condolences, and we hope that uh, you know things. We have beautiful memories about her that we have about her. Thank you. Thank you very much. Anyone else? Actually, I knew Bunloi when my brother's my brother is uh, suffering from pancreas cancer. Somehow, I met her during some of the school events, and I knew town uh, planner Lau Bi Ho. He was he is currently still my director of Ultimate Professional Centre. So I didn't know that actually Bunloi is his wife until I met them at DCCK at the scan exhibition. So watch a small world. So basically uh, myself and Bo Lui, we have a special rapport and uh, we have been connecting each other and uh, now supporting each other in a lot of ways, you know. And of course I know that she's battling with breast cancer and uh, I really admire her. She truly is a fighter. And she has touched a lot of lives, I believe. So basically, um, like what uh, you know, her doctor was saying, um, we should be very happy for her because she is definitely in a better place and she doesn't have to suffer anymore. And uh, she's already enjoyed eternal life with her Heavenly Father. Thank you. Thank you very much. <coughs> Um, I first met Bunui in uh, 10 years ago, exactly 10 years ago. She was a very um, shy and at that time we met because um, we wanted to start the cancer advocacy and um, she was very fearful of going in front and giving a talk on the state of cancer care in um, Sarawak. But over the years, I worked very closely with um, Bunli. Um, she took up the challenge, and what you see is the founder, the president of SCAN, and someone who has been persistently fighting for the rights of the cancer patients, and she was relentless in her battle to help others. And most importantly, she was also a very kind and giving person. She shared her knowledge. You know, she, she went to many places. We, 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 we went on trips to Bali. I mean, not so much for holiday, but for her to learn about being an advocate. We went to Bali, we went to Madrid, uh, we went to Singapore. We had a good time. And I will remember this Bunri. Even though you have gone, these are the memories I will cherish about you. And uh, she has passed on her knowledge. She is so generous in passing on her knowledge to the next group of team in SCAN. So that is something we must appreciate about her. She's a very giving person. And the most important thing I want to say is she was always so proud of both of you. She always talked about you. She wanted to see both of you graduate. And I'm glad you both gave her that. Thank you very much. And uh, I'm so sorry. During COVID, we both also discovered, I mean, I discovered religion. She's always been talking about religion. So thanks to her, I also discovered the faith in God, although not in Christ, but in Baha'ism. But we both shared verses and encouraged each other and her passion for the choir. You know, there was really something that she also cherished. She always shared about how they practice and how they you know, go for competitions. So she's truly, she was truly a very passionate person and I'm glad she has given to all of you and affected so many, impacted so many of us in the right way. I really don't know who I can call and talk to when I need some guidance. I hope, you know, all of us can go through her, missing her, but always keep her in our memory in the right way. 
that's not good. I know Bunri for more than 20 years now. We came from the same, we were in the same office before. She was the uh, QC section manager. I was the IT section manager. And we always uh, go for lunch together. I must say at work, Bunri, she is a very meticulous person. She do a lot of ISO. I think a lot of you heard about this ISO and the way she taught the class because I have attended her class uh, she's very good at it uh, she will bring chocolates and she will make the class very lucky and attractive oh I see one of my ex colleagues here okay actually I'm, I, I'm not prepared but I felt uh, Bun Lui will say, Suzanne, you better come out and say something. Don't uh -huh. <laughs> share about her silicon. Uh, we were pioneer. Uh, we, we went to the office at Riverbank. That was that long ago, and that was how long I have known her. After Bun Lui was sick until now, she always tried to be a very independent person. She never act like a sick person. And that is something that I always reminded myself whenever I come to visit her. She tried to do everything on her own if she could and not to trouble anyone. And, and the way she deal with things, I actually feel like a lot of times when I try to come to encourage her, I am the one who is being encouraged. And there's something I know in the church ministry, one particular event that I really want to share with all of you. As you all know, she can play piano very well. She's one of the pianists. So at one of the, uh, one service, she found she lost her whole bag. If any one of us, if we have lost our bag, what be your reaction? You may even go and tell the pastor saying that I lost my bag. I need to go and find it or something. And what the only do at that time is she told me, she said she felt very calm in her heart. She got peace. She finished her ministry. She finished her service. Later, when she went home, her TV was gone. A lot of things in the house was gone because the key of the house was in the back. So the thief came and took everything. And yet, Bunga is the one who persevered and finished her service. So from that, I learned. That is how with someone who has faith and所以他都是我累很久了当他第一次在公司知道他发病的时候我们公司那个时候刚好在做这个医药检查他跟我讲医院的cancer 他一直很勇敢地去面对
，这是好像有两年了，或者是四年了，或者六年了。在从他刚开始生病的时候，他孩子很小，他最大的期望是希望他们两个能够毕业。去年年尾的时候，我跟文磊，我们两个人一起去吃饭。他很高兴跟我说，九月的时候，他去参加一零的毕业典礼，然后他们也去西班牙，他们家是考毕业完，他非常的高兴，他也觉得他活得很够了，上帝听了他的祷告，从他生病到现在，上帝给了他十八年。说他的人生，我觉得他 she left a legacy of good t h i n and I also proud to have the opportunity to be involved in the translation of the book. Through translating the book, I also learn a lot myself. And the way the book was written is so brave and so detailed. He talk about how someone actually faced cancer from the very first stage until periodic pain, until how you face death. And I think for Boon Lay, she wrote that book itself. Her body lifting, she really did it. She in this path of faith. 他就是一路跟随主到底，所以我希望我们在做信心堂的弟兄姐妹们，我们主里的弟兄姐妹们，我们也要学习我们的精神。我希望家人们，你们要坚强下去，你妈妈很爱你们。Thank you, Susan. Um, there's somebody else also from First Silicon, uh, Tang Hongwei. When she heard the news, she wrote me a letter and asked that I should read it. She said that um, she came here in November 2003 uh, to work at First Silicon, and as a foreigner, feeling the pangs of home homesick and loneliness, it was Sister Budwi who reached out with open arms at the workplace, extending invitation to Faith Methodist Church and later to her small group. Budwi's friendship wove a thread of belonging and comfort. Both in the workplace and on my spiritual journey, her commitment and leadership shone through as she guided Quality System、uh, section towards achieving automotive quality,、uh, quality system certification. Despite having to face personal challenges, Sister Bunui exemplified unwavering faith in Christ, her positiveness, cheerfulness, and refusal to surrender hope during her years of treatment. Left an indelible mark on those privileged to witness her journey. Beyond the corporate realm, Bunui's heart overwhelmed with compassion for the sick and lost. In 2017, she became the chartered president of the Society for Cancer Advocacy and Awareness in Kuching. I am profoundly grateful for the emotional bank account we established over the past two decades through small yet meaningful gestures. From open house invitation during Chinese New Year to small group outings to super girl makan sessions, despite residing alone in Kuching, I felt the warmth of God's love through Bun Lui's encouraging words during my hospital stays, her support during the quarantine order、uh, amid the COVID pandemic, and countless other occasions. I will dearly miss Bun Lui's enduring smile and cheerful voice, and that's from、uh, Hong Wei. Uh, now in Singapore,、um, anyone else? Last one. Anyone else? I'm sure we all have got lots and lots of beautiful stories to tell about how God had used Bunui to minister to us, to impact us. I'm beginning to hear all these stories just from different people, and especially some of the young people、uh, from FMC. Um, I know she meant a lot to you, and so we will continue to journey on, continue to shine、uh, for God,、uh, following Bunui's path. 
Shall we all stand as we sing our closing hymn? Because he lives, I can wait to fall.